All right, glad you could join us for this Friday night prayer and Bible study. Uh, we're excited. We got about two more lessons in the book of Ecclesiastes, and then we're going to start something uh, uh, called uh, Back to the Basics. And wow, we just need to go back to the basics of Christianity. Go back over and uh, really uh, look at the basics of Christianity. It's uh, exciting. I got that from uh, Dr. Tom Wallace, or Tom Malone. I'm sorry, Dr. Tom Malone had preached a message on that, and I really like that. And we're going to use a couple different uh, studies to get through that back to the basics. So if you're joining us, I'm thankful uh, that you have been a part of this study in Ecclesiastes. And so we're looking at this uh, lesson here, and we are in uh, chapter number 12. And verse number one through seven, we'll read that in just a minute. Uh, so I want you to go ahead and open your Bibles up. And I really encourage you to use your Bibles. That way your phone doesn't distract you when you get a message or uh, some kind of social media uh, pop up or whatever else may happen. I pray that you just take your Bible, open it up, and we'll look at the Word of God, your copy of the Word of God. Now, I'm going to pray here in just a minute. I just want you to remember our church and uh, remember the brief hearts uh, this uh, week. Uh, um, we think of Rachel Burgess family, uh, Sue Shepherd family, and also Buck Webb uh, family. So you just remember them, and and, uh, and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, we love you. Uh, we thank you, God, for this day. We thank you for the blessings, God. And I just pray, Heavenly Father, you'd be with uh, our church. God, we are so thankful uh, uh, for your hand to be upon Cornerstone Baptist Church. And God, I pray that you just continue uh, to put your hand upon us, uh, fill us with your spirit, guide and direct our pastor as you do and as you have. Uh, God, I pray that you'd be with Pastor Mike and you would just watch over him, uh, lift him up spiritually and physically, Lord, and we just thank you so much for him, Miss Elizabeth and their family. And God, I pray for Brother Ted, Lord, we thank you for him, and God, especially pray for uh, his health, Lord, that you would touch him, thankful that he's here, uh, that he's teaching uh, again last night, we're thankful for that. And God, just pray you'd be with him, Lord, and just help him to heal and just watch over him, God. And I just pray for our church family. Lord, I pray for our cancer list. We got so many there uh, on our cancer list. And we pray that you'd just touch uh, those folks, Lord. Uh, uh, I think of uh, Brother Corey uh, now going through his treatments. Uh, Lord, just uh, uh, pray that you'd be with him. Uh, Lord, give him strength during this time, Lord, and, and just watch over him and his family. And Lord, I pray uh, that you'd be with Miss Savannah Amos. God, you'd touch her body in a mighty way. God, we lift her up to you, Lord, that you would just be with her. And Lord, we know uh, that you don't need doctors. Uh, Lord, you just need your hand and you can heal her. And we pray for that, God. We pray that you would touch her and you would heal her. And Lord, we, we uh, are begging and, and, and begging you just to touch her body and be with her family, God. Be with Brother, Brother Steve and, and Miss Leah, Lord, and, and little Taylor, God. Touch their, their lives and, and just strengthen them during this time, Lord, and, and help them to seek your face during this time. God, we commit her into your hands, Lord, that you would just uh, restore her health. And God, I do pray that you'd watch over our church, Lord. We, we love you and thank you for our church. And, and God, I pray for the ministries, Lord, you'd touch our bus ministry and our Bible shop. Lord, our Sunday school ministries, our Wednesday night uh, children's church ministries and the Sunday morning and Sunday night ministry, with children's ministries, you'd be with those. And, and Lord, you are blessing them beyond measure and we're so thankful for that. And be with our youth ministry. You'd be with Ashley and I as we uh, lead our youth to uh, follow you and to walk after you and to follow your steps and not man's God. And I pray that you'd just be with us there and help us uh, to encourage these young people uh, to follow you, God. And I pray that you'd be with uh, the ladies' prayer group and all the ladies around here that cook and clean and and uh, they, they decorate, God, and just thank you for them, those unseen 
folks, uh, uh, for the men that uh, do some maintenance around here. Uh, so thankful for those guys and appreciate them and what they do. God, I pray you just bless and watch over them. God, be their country, Lord. We need you in a mighty way for our country. You just uh, help us, Lord, there and, and uh, guide and direct our, our uh, uh, government, Lord, that you just uh, put your hand upon them. And, Lord, we love you. And, God, we just thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' precious name, amen. All right, uh, in Ecclesiastes chapter number 12, and I'll begin reading in verse number one, the Bible says, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few and those that look, at, that look out of the windows be darkened and the doors shall be shut in the streets uh, when the sound of the grinding is low and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird and all the daughters of music shall he uh, shall be brought low also when they shall be afraid of that which is high and fears uh, shall be in the way and the almond trees shall flourish and the grasshopper shall be a burden and the desire shall fail because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. Or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Uh, tonight's lesson uh, from this study uh, is our day of departure. Uh, our day of departure. Uh, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter number 12 and verse 7, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. The ending of this, of the book of Ecclesiastes, causes us to think of our day of departure. The day of our departure is the day that we leave this world. And if we know the Bible and we know the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, then we know that outside of Christ's coming, we will pass through the grave. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27, it is appointed unto men once to die and after this the judgment. All of us want to live as long as we possibly can. I know I do. And people are living longer these days. But no matter how long we may live, we will come to the one day uh, that will be our last. Our bodies will, turn, will return to the earth and we will go to meet our God. This book, in this passage of scripture, it is appropriate it is a sermon about life. It is appropriate that the preacher brings us to think about death in this last chapter. See, the Lord desires for us to think about our day of departure. Uh, he also desires that, but what we are going to do, what are we going to do with him while we live here? What are we going to do with God, with the Lord Jesus Christ, while we are alive? That's what we really need to think about. As we look at the first verse in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, it, it talks about our youth. And in just a few verses, it brings us to the day of our departure. From our youth to death in just a few verses. Our bodies, we were formed from the dust of the earth. And our bodies came from the dust and back to the dust we will return. So we do not know when death is coming. That's something that we can look at. We don't know when death is coming. I don't know when my day of departure will be. 
and neither do you. But one thing we can say is it is coming. Our day of departure is coming. Number one, the potential of the present. The potential of the present. Uh, in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse number one and two, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth while the evil days come not nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say I have no pleasure in them. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened nor the clouds return after the rain. We see that some things can be done now and only now. While there is light and life, we are to do what God desires for us to do. This is the potential of the present. Do not plan on serving God later. That's something that I stress to our teenagers, and I know I've said it quite a bit uh, through, these broad, through these live streams, uh, that we don't want to put off serving God. You know why? Because you're going to say uh, a lot of our teenagers, well, I've got a lot of schooling to do and a lot of them come to high school and whenever they leave high school, all of a sudden they get a job or they turn 16, uh, they get a job and oh man, I've got to make money. I don't have time to go to church. And then they go to college. And, oh, now it's double time. I've got to work and I've got to go to school. I've got to study. I don't have time for church or God. And then uh, they get a, well, you know, maybe after I get a career and I get going, then maybe I'll serve God. Uh, but then you get your career and your wife and your family. And then you just think that, you know what, if I've had a job and I've had a, uh, went to college, I was too busy for God and all that. Well, I'm too busy for God now because I've got to raise my family. Well, you're not raising your family in the right way if you don't have them in the house of God. Uh, we need to think about now, how are we going to, don't plan on serving God later. You need to serve God now. Many people miss the golden moment God gives them to live. Christ said in Matthew chapter 6, hey, turn with me over there and we're going to read that passage of scripture in Matthew chapter number 6. We'll begin reading in verse number 25 and we'll read through the remainder of the chapter. I want you to listen. If you don't have a Bible close, I want you to listen to me. But if you do have a Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 25. The Lord Jesus Christ in the Sermon on the Mount is giving us some of his wisdom. No man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what shall or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, uh, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, how they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is, is cast into the oven, uh, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought of uh, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Now that first, uh, number one, uh, do not wait, do not put off serving God until later, because the Bible clearly tells us, but seek ye first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So we should be looking to God first. 
And all these things shall be added unto you. And it says also take sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Don't look, don't waste your days worrying about tomorrows. And there is potential in the present to enjoy life and live for the Lord. Death and disease are coming uh, with the help of God. Learn to enjoy life one day at a time. Everything we do for Jesus Christ must be done in the present, the potential of the present, the passing of our years. Uh, this is a great illustration. Turn back to Ecclesiastes chapter number 12. Uh, now you listen, I didn't understand this and I read it and I read it and Dr. Clarence Sexton has cleared this up for me uh, really well and, and I really enjoy, enjoy this uh, uh, illustration here of uh, that God gives us of the passing of our years. Nowhere in literature will you find an allegory on aging that can compare uh, to what God gives us in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verses three through five. So if you wanna look at those with me uh, and, and just kinda you can read along, I'm just gonna hit the main points. The keepers of the house. As the years pass, our hands, once strong and steady, well, begin to tremble. Those are the keepers of the house. Uh, in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble. And the strong men shall bow themselves. This speaks of our legs weakening in old age. And the grinders cease because they are few. Now, the grinders, later in life, our grinders or our teeth, they cease because they are few. Some we have to get false teeth. Uh, I hope, I pray that I'll never have to have those, but uh, there are, uh, and then you look at, and those that look out of the windows be darkened, the windows darkened. As we get older, our eyes begin to darken and we cannot see well. There's a lot of people say that age 40 uh, was the time they had to pick up reading glasses. I'm very thankful to God that I have not had to do that yet. And I'm praying maybe he'll just keep my eyesight and I won't have to ever pick them up and, and uh, wear them again. So the windows, as we get older, our eyes begin to darken and we cannot see well. Uh, and the doors shut, shall be shut in the streets. It says the doors shall be shut. The doors shut. This is referring to the loss of hearing that comes when we get old. Uh, uh, so... Uh, our hearing goes. I talked to a fellow the other day. He said he would uh, uh, just miss his coming to church, but he can't hear at all. And it really just uh, uh, breaks his heart. So uh, as we grow older, our hearing goes. And, and then you look in verse 4, and the door shall be shut in the streets uh, when the sound of the grinding is low. Now, rising up at the, or uh, the door shall be shut and the grinding is low as our ears. And then it says, and the door shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird. Uh, older folks do not enjoy being at, or, uh, I'm sorry, uh, often an indicator of old age is not being able to sleep well. Rising up at the voice of the bird, we're getting up earlier and earlier. Uh, sometimes I, I'm like, man, I don't have no, uh, something going on. You you know, we, we're like, we're going to sleep in in the morning, uh, 6 o'clock, 5.30, 6 o'clock, just wide awake. Can't do that. Can't go back to sleep for nothing. Just, why am I awake? And so as we get older, we get up. We know we sleep less, sleepless nights. Fear of heights. Now, listen. And verse number four, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high. Older folks do not enjoy being at great heights uh, as younger people do. Uh, and there was a time, I've I framed houses all my life, or not all my life, but for a long time. And uh, I love being up high. I love being on the very top uh, of the trusses. That's where I wanted to be. I, whenever we set trusses, the crane would come in, bring the truss in. I wanted to be on the very peak, uh, uh, nailing the blocks on or doing whatever, you know, stirring up the trusses. I want to be in the high spot all the time. Uh, me and my brother and other fellows my age uh, were like that. We just love to be up there. And buddy, here, here lately, I 
time I went and helped uh, my brother on his on his garage. He had 16 foot walls on his shop, and man, I was scared to death. Uh, uh, not doing it as much, but uh, getting a little older, I, I pray that I, I don't lose that. But getting man, that fear of heights is coming. Uh, I pray that I don't ever get really bad about it. Uh, and then uh, they're afraid of that which is high. So uh, see also, and they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish. Fear in the way. We become much more cautious about safety as we get older. You know, I never thought I'd be like that. Uh, my dad ha had some crazy contraptions set up for us as we as kids. Uh, we had a, a, a zip line when we were kids. I'm, man, I, I'm surprised people let their kids come to our house. Uh, but we had a zip line that run from one end of the yard to the other. I don't know. I want to say it was about at least 80 to 100 yards long, uh, somewhere around there. Maybe not quite 100 yards, but it was a long ways. Uh, but it was about I don't know, 25, 30 feet in a tree. Two by fours down to a tree, two foot by two foot platform. Had a homemade bicycle uh, wheel, cut the bicycle part off, the front handlebars and the bicycle wheel was the what we rode on. A, a nylon 500, uh, uh, it's about as big as a 500 cable, uh, nylon rope. And we would ride down that thing. We didn't have no safety harness hooked to us. We didn't have nothing like that. We didn't, what's safety harness? And we would ride down that thing backwards. Uh, my brother, I think my brother rode uh, up, upside down with just his feet hanging on with his legs wrapped around the handlebar. I mean, there were some crazy things we did. And mom and dad let us. Uh, and, I mean, there's all kinds of things. I go over stories, it was crazy what we did when we was kids. I wouldn't let my kids, I, I wouldn't let my kids do nothing like that. I'm like, you ain't riding your bicycle without me watching you. <laughs> we, as I get older, I'm like, man, I got to be a lot more cautious. We're more careful. Hey, I'm more careful with what I do for myself. Uh, some people don't believe that, uh, but I am. I'm more careful and cautious about what I do and how I, I, I perform certain things and do things. That I look at how ladders are set up. I, I'm used to we wouldn't care, uh, but I watch out for things. So uh, fear and the way we become much more cautious about safety as we get older. Um, the almond tree, this tree had a beautiful silver color and, and fruit bearing, and which pictures the graying of the hair as we grow older. A lot of folks get uh, uh, gray hair. I pray that I'm like my Grandpa V and my dad, we, and there's not a lot of gray. I mean, there's just speckles of it here, uh, but I pray that I'm like them. They didn't have a lot, but. Um, uh, and then you have the mourners in the streets. Mourners would cry in the streets when someone was about to die. Uh, actually, that was a job. Sometimes some people would pay them to mourn. Uh, for their family and we need to see the passing of our years in order to make our years count for God there's going to come a time and that's why we are so encouraging a, to raise a generation uh, uh, that knows God and that wants to serve God because if we don't if it says remember now the creator uh, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth while the evil days come not nor the years draw nigh, because there's going to come a time when we can't serve God because of our age. Now we've got, there's some older folks in our church uh, that can't make it to church now. Uh, and they've been faithful to our church for a long, long time, but we keep putting off, oh, I'm going to serve God later, I'm going to serve God later. Uh, that is not uh, uh, good. We need to serve God now. We need to serve Him now. So we've seen the potential of the present, the passing of our years, the preparation for eternity. This is probably the most important thing you'll hear. Read, um, we're going to look at Ecclesiastes in chapter uh, number 12, verse, uh, verse number 6. Or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel be broken at the cistern. You see that right there. Uh, uh, that There is coming a day when the silver cord will be loosed and we will go to meet our God. 
We need to prepare for eternity. And the first thing we must know is uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is our personal Savior. See, the, uh, if you don't know, you say, I, I'm going to ask you a question. Have you ever accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Have you ever come to a point when you said, I can't save myself. I need to know Jesus Christ as my Savior. I want to tell you something. Go to cornerstonebaptist.me and, and, and listen to Pastor Mike as he gives the gospel. It takes 10 minutes and he can tell you exactly how you can go to heaven. It is just as simple, admitting uh, that we're a sinner and we need to accept uh, Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be be saved. They shall be saved. See, the greatest thing we can do is give our lives completely to God right now. We need to say, God, I want to serve you now. I don't want to wait till later. You need to serve him now. We need to realize the potential of the present. We need to realize the passing of our years is going to go very quickly. And prepare for eternity, uh, not only by accepting Christ as your personal Savior, but by growing and serving him the rest of your life. I pray that you'll do that. Do not waste another day, because the day of our departure is coming sooner than any of us can imagine. Let's pray. Heavenly Father. God, we love you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessings, God. I thank you so much for uh, this sermon about life that you gave to Solomon. And he has penned for us in your word. And you have, you have uh, uh, Lord, I, I'm so thankful for it. God, and I pray if there's one listening, God, that uh, doesn't know you as their Savior, they will pray and, and accept you, Lord, realizing that they can't save themselves, that they need you uh, to get into heaven. You are uh, the only way they're going to get into heaven. Uh, I pray that they would uh, come to know you as their personal Savior. And God, I pray for that one that's struggling with service to you. I pray for that one that is struggling with, uh, I'm too busy. God, I pray that you would show them their need for you. I pray that you would show them their need for a church family and their need to serve you now. God, we love you. We thank you for what you're going to do. Watch over us this week. In Jesus' name, amen.